Hello and welcome to another dramatic reading <coughs> by me and Azani84. Today we'll be doing the next five chapters of Power Rangers Sword Dynasty. And uh, I apologise for the lack of music this time, but the last video got taken off YouTube because of the music and I managed to edit it out the offending pieces, but it does as result in some noticeable audio quality drops, so I decided to try and do a video without any music for Chit Ains. Let me know what you think. And also, for the next extra episode, uh, a few, five chaps I read, I'm going to be needing at least two guest hosts as part of a gag. Well, with that said, on to Act 6. The Insultinator! What, does he have a big red button right and built in there that will cause him to self-destruct? And we've got a picture of a monster being used. Note to fancy, leader. And you are kind of busy. Maybe it's just time for me to go ahead if I feel like it. And if you have anything to contribute, you can post it. I think short behind-the-scenes events will do. Alright, that's the saying that we're going back to the regular writer this time. Yay! Michael had just finished the day of training. So much of that cliffhanger last time where he almost died. <laughs> Just then, the Power Rangers Sword Dynasty team are forced to train harder than ever after Michael is given a day off. What? <laughs> Where does this come from? I, um, what? Well, you should learn to take things easy for once, said Marianne. Well, she had a love-hate thing for him. She despised him, but she finds herself attracted to him. Contradictory, really. Well, at least he knows what that word means. In here, Charles and Cornelia train each other. Charles was starting to notice the fiery spirit of Cornelia while I train. I, I really do admire your toughness, said Charles. He was kind of blushing about it. Does he like Cornelia? Hmm. But <laughs> he's just not supposed to show any personality. Why, thanks, said Cornelia. Why, thanks, said Cornelia. Doom had their own sessions and trying to discover themselves better. Which is not a well-written sentence, but let's move on. Back at the Dark Vessel. Again, I feel like this name was different last time. Emperor Gedor is once again furious at his failures. You mean his monster's failures? He's done bugger all. We can't destroy those meddling rangers. Gedor feud. And I wonder when will Skull Slash and Deceptor arrive and realise we need them. I think Skull Slash may arrive soon, my lord, said Lady Ling. He's still training. Defeating the Sword Dynasty Rangers is never easy. He, and again, that's not how you do foreshadowing. You, you hint that things will happen. You don't say they're going to happen. While we wait, we must devise a plan, said Emperor Gedor. I think we can use humanity's insults against them. Literally, that is, said Iris. I think the insultinator will do. People throw harsh words at each other and this will soon make them destroy each other and the dark waters may rise. Um, how does that plan make sense? Summon! Gedor raised his left arm and called for the insultinator. He was then told to go forward to turn people's words into a deadly weapon. Insultinator appears and begins spreading his power to cause mayhem. People start witnessing explosions happen, and the Sword Dynasty Rangers receive a report at their base from Fat and Finn, who are in charge of keeping an eye on things. They had just become the first victims. It's just bad, said Fat. Explosions happen when this guy insults people. He called me a pig and boom. Same here, said Finn. He called me a toothpick and boom. A powerful, a powerful foe indeed, said Michael, but we can defeat him. Oh, I, sorry, I forgot that oh, Michael wasn't the Irish one. Going to the battlefield, the evil insultinator. Ater begins lashing insult at every one of them. He goes, Michael a squatter, Roberto a slave, Charles an Irish chunk, Mariana bimbo, and they all cause explosions. However, no insults work on Cornelia. Probably because he hasn't actually tried any specific insults. What the insult they said. It's not working. I have to try harder. But it all resulted in failure. He retreats back to his emperor. Back at the death ship. Okay, I'm sure. Yeah, that's the different name to the one he used earlier. <laughs> the emperor get all his furious. What? The emperor fumed. Can't you take care of them all? My emperor, it's never easy, said Insultinator, to deal with somebody who can bounce them off so easily. 
Back at the base, director Samuel Hung begins another lecture. When your law insults big or small to bother you, it becomes more painful than ever, said director Samuel Hung. And Cornelia has done a good job. Ah, oh, that's nice. He no just Cornelia's done something. He said, Well, I was a reject to my own people. I was used to being insulted, working for a few scraps of coins, but I overcame them to live a better life. Um, okay. That does sound a bit... I'm not sh- bit, I'm not sure what it's saying that the Spanish girl had to... Had to was born into slavery. <laughs> Especially since it said that she's specifically Mexican in her character profile. Oh, shame on me, said Michael. I never realised how oversensitive I am. Sorry. You are not oversensitive by any definition of the word. He made a bow like a Chinese mercenary would. Oh, uh, but competently. Now we must strengthen our resolve, said Charles. Cornelia, we've got some training to do. Cornelia and Charles begin to do their meditation stances. Strengthening their resolve, they figure out they can defeat how they can defeat the monster. They go back into battle, and while the others take care of the younger soldiers, Cornelia counters the monster. Doesn't tell us how, she just counters it. What the? Insulted, he said. My powers aren't working. What's happening? And it's, t- and it's time to defeat you, said Cornelia. I think we can stop him if we stuff his mouth, said Charles. Charles did a counterattack and holds the monster. Good idea, said Cornelia. Now it's time to put my Chinese character lessons, lessons to use. Writing with Chinese character for Stone, Stone stuff his mouth. The monster couldn't speak. The Power Rangers saw Dynasty use the shot bomber to execute a team attack, destroying Insultinator, who then grows into giant size. We need Dynasty Megazord power now! Just better as the battle is out of tide, they call the Beetlezord to form the Dynasty Megazord Beetle Warrior mode, just as it was last episode. I said, hope, hope it is, because otherwise that'd be a horrible costume. Ink. Ink. After the battle, Cornelia fought all due to tiredness, and Charles carries him. Cornelia has apparently had a sex change between lines, and apparently they didn't actually defeat the monster. Way to go, guys! On her, on his back. Fa- thanks for all the help, Cornelia said. Charles, don't mention it, said Cornelia, who was so tired. At this moment, what is Charles thinking about her? He was simply admiring that Cornelia was more than a cute girl. She was tough as a weed. She's really awesome, said Charles. Well, yeah, she's good, but I wouldn't call her anything spectacular. Okay, and now we move on to Act 7. Awaken. Sword fist sword. Which does not exist, so, okay. Okay, I'll stop there. Okay, since Act 7 doesn't exist, I'll move on to Act 8, The Wedding Disaster. Note, I'm working on as much original footage as I can, hee hee. Emperor Gedor is delighted at the re-emergence of Skull Slash. He soon turns over and the audience sees his obviously inhuman eyes behind his black mask to hide his monstrous features. Okay, I'm not sure about... Good foreshadowing or bad foreshadowing? You decide. I'm glad to see you here, said Emperor Gedor. Just then, a man with Chinese features enters the room and transforms into a white-skinned monster with a skull for a face after bowing, bowing down. There's a skull slash. Emperor, I have returned, said the skull slash. Just then, Lady Ling said, It's nice to have you back, my love. So I suggest we have a, have a date against the Power Rangers Sword Dynasty team. At the same time, I think I have a plan to help raise the levels of dark water. We all need to break the hearts of men by sacrificing their brides to our master Gedor, said Skullslash. Just Ben Emperor Gedor said, let it be so. Albus, on the other hand, grows to worry what influence Skullslash will have on their empire. On the other hand, Gedor is seemingly worried. But it's not on the other hand, it's the same thing. It's likewise hiding something that could lead to his downfall. Is it that he's not not a human? Just as marriages are going on, however, around the city, brides are being kidnapped. At the headquarters, where the people are having their lunch, they turn on the TV to discover the incident. Incident. Hey, what the? said Michael. Brides are being kidnapped. 
For what? asked Marianne. This is terrible. I believe we must investigate this immediately. But then we can see Michael hallucinating about marrying Marianne and the whole team is there. Oh God, it's going to be one of those chapters. He schemes to do everything to get her, even if she hates him. Or does she? Yes, she hates him. I must have Marianne one way or another, said Michael. So in addition to being an asshole and a sexist, yes, Michael is now a pervert. Just then inside one of the many bases of the Styx Empire, which had not existed prior to this episode, Skull Slash is once again in his human form, and now Lady Ling reveals hers, a lovely Chinese woman. Yeah, that makes a good point about both both the source material and its official adaptation. Why didn't Dayu have a human form? I mean, in her backstory pretty much allows her to have one, but she never t takes, takes it on. I mean, can someone explain that? That... These are the same people that pretended to be receptionists all along. A detail that would have been nice to hear instead of being told. Oh, it was right now. So, my love, it has been a long time, said Scott Slash. We may have some brides. When those men discover that they've lost their brides forever, their broken hearts will cause a rise of dark water. Indeed, said Lady Ling. We must intercept everything in our human form. These tears are so romantic. It's been a long time. Skull Slash reveals his ugly visage once again. He begins to treat Lady Ling some Chinese rice wine and some Chinese dumplings while a Chinese love song plays behind. Instrumental famous Teresa Teng song. Just then, they use their mystical communicator. Footage from Mass Man of Zaber and Okay, I'm gonna find that song to stop recording here. Okay, and now we're back. I found the song and just wait for me to skip this ad. Yeah, I think this is the song he was going for, but oh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, anyway, back to the thick. And because I said, I can feel the level of dark water increasing. Keep it up. Those tears will soon be the demise of foolish mankind. Thank you, our Emperor. Both of them gave a respectful bow. Sign out. Get all the seamer base laughing at what he thinks he will allow the dark waters to rise. So it's not going to work then. <laughs> Why are you even allowing this plan to go ahead? Sword Dynasty team is running out of luck. Just then, Fat and Finn arrived with a list of brides to be. There's a lot getting married today, said Fat. Soon enough, these brides may be abducted too. We must take this to a dire director, said Finn. He may have a plan. Back at the base, director Samuel Hung comes with the most ridiculous plan ever. Well, we may have to make a big wedding, said director Samuel Hung. Two will have to be the bride and groom. That's not a ridiculous plan. It actually sounds rather sensible, all things considered. <laughs> so I said, I kind of thought about it. Me and Cornelia prepared the whole thing to act as bait. I guess I have another plan. Michael will be the groom, said director Samuel Hung. Oh, God. I guess that means, uh, means Marianne should be the bride, said Charles and Cornelia laughing. Marianne said, absolutely not. In your dreams, Michael. I've been looking forward to marrying you since we met, said Michael. Besides, I can't get much if you're an American girl and I'm a Chinese guy. Not at all. In fact, today is the day my dreams come true and I could care less how you feel, Marianne. Whether you like me or not, I'm going to be your husband. Want to stay in the team and agree to marry me? Okay, if this is blatant sexual assault, Marianne should sue. <laughs> Oh, okay, I agree to marry you, but don't even think of asking me to love you, said Marianne, but with a really bad emotion pouncing, knowing her loss of freedom was just right there. Okay, I love how Marianne's aware she's stuck in a sexist relationship, but I hate how she's doing nothing about it. 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 She's marrying a man who has been shouting at her and mistreating her. Then why is she going ahead with it? He held her as she struggled as she knew she was going to get into a tight situation. He's had his eyes on her for some time. Her heart beat faster like never before. She saw herself lose everything all in one day. She wanted a man who would truly like her, not just somebody who's playing around with her. What harm can it do? said the other, laughing at the scene. Well, there's a lot of harm. I mean, loveless marriages tend to be more problematic than non-loveless marriages. 
and Bill, Bob, one of both of them will end up committing suicide or murder. Yeah, to end the relationship. Well, you should be his wife. Why are they shipping them? Yuck, said Miriam with a disgusted expression. She was pouting while Michael got a diamond ring to propose to her and it went through her ring finger and gave her a kiss at the lips. She felt disgusted about it. Again, why is she going through with this? She should just quit. I guess be, I guess everything's planned, said Direct Samuel Long. You two make such a great couple. No, she, no, they don't. Let's proceed with it. Please, Marianne said. She's imagining her head, Michael turning into an ugly monster and she marrying him like that. The monster would probably be an improvement. Marianne, whoever decided to consider to go up with a plan with a backup plan just in case. Of course, she was going to lead them to their headquarters where Emperor Gedor was awaiting the sacrifice of brides. They have Emperor Gedor at their headquarters. That sounds like a really bad, really bad idea. You know, in plan the planning department. She was at the bridal parlor, crying over her face as she wore her wedding gown. She was meant to be a Power Ranger, yet she was going to be the bride of a jerk. Now, yeah, uh, the author is trying to say that she's just being unreasonable, but she's totally right. Cornelia appeared as her handmaid, saying, My lady, our lord awaits you to be his bride. Please marry Michael now. Do I have to push through this? asked Marianne in tears. Michael can be such a jerk, forcing me to be his bride. I can't imagine spending my life with such a man. We have no choice. He's our leader, said Cornelia, consoling her. You do have a choice. You can quit. Marianne, just go now before he does anything rash. The vassals came to grab the unwilling bride. Okay, that is definitely assault. Marianne decides to face it, ace it like as if she was going to be executed. Stay on there, girl. <laughs> oh, when you're his bride, we'll treat you much better, said one of the vassals. Yeah, only one of us will rape you. <laughs> rape you. And I apologise for anyone who didn't think that was funny, but I was trying to lighten the mood of this thing. That's not very funny. Marianne decided to embrace her fate worse than death. Oh, you just run away. Pull a... Hey, in a large hall... Director Samuel wore a clever disguise as the bride's father, probably because the real bride's father would never go along with this plan, and got a real minister to fool the enemy. What real minister would agree to do this ceremony? Eek. Marianne is in her wedding gown with a frown, and Michael is well in his tuxedo, thrilled at the whole plan. He was planning to legalise it even before the battle is over. Oh God! He was addressed formally. Your bride has come, said Cornelia. Marianne was there, all dressed up, but the tears ruined her face. Good, said Michael. Now, my bride, come to your husband. Wedding starts with Marianne in tears of utter confusion, walking towards where Michael was greeting her with a smile. Of course, every other wedding in the area was cancelled. That won't be suspicious at all. Fat and thin with the other vassals prepared for ceremony. She finally accepted the grim reality that was destined to be hers. Probably because she hasn't done anything to actually counter it. You have nothing else to live for than to be mine. Do you know what it means to be loved by me? To be my bride, Marianne? You will soon be my second in command and all, said Michael to his unwilling bride, Marianne, holding her chin and he kissed her cheek. That is definitely he crossing a line. She pa stood passive staring at her victor. Victor, I think there's meant to be another word there. Marianne had no choice to say I do in their wedding ceremony. Kissed up the lips, sealing her fate. Just then, both Skull Slash and Lady Ling appear in their human forms. They pretend to be receptionists. Uh, okay, since the Rangers haven't seen their human forms, I think I can't read Chapter 7 for obvious reasons, but yeah, I think that's the first time. I'm Brim. Just a two of ex. Ah, have exchanged their vows. The Unglers appear to take Marianne. Human form of Skull Slash and Lady Ling immediately move out and go back to their assigned base. So, oh, the Power Rangers are holding a wedding today, huh? Too bad, though, the Pink Ranger won't be marrying the Red Ranger, said Lady Ling in a crude and rude manner. Anna? Yay, the villains are real heroes in this story. Oh, we're stopping this madness. Too bad for Bryden getting married, said Skull Slash. That's literally what she just said. 
Heard worded differently. Just then they transformed back to their monster form. So you two are involved, said Marianne, who is now being tied down. How she know that the two of them are part of the Styx Empire? I mean, in Samurai and Shinkens, uh, 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 the two pinks both recognised Dayu from archives, while, while Juzo's last Deku was a newcomer that they'd never heard of. Of... Fortunately for her, I had a strong signal. It was all part of a plan to get them there. Just then, Michael used his dynasty phone to detect Marianne pinpointing to the location. Did the Skull Slash and Lady Ling are about to proceed to the ceremony? The others show up. Drat, said Skull Slash. Our plan is being foiled. Marianne was able to use her brain to escape. Unlike at the wedding. <laughs> She's preparing to sword dynasty team transform and attack. Just then, Skull Slash and Lady Ling transform into their respective forms. Two enemies, at a, two enemies at a time, said Michael. Let's try to defeat them. Let's not actually defeat them, let's just try. Another battle ensues and Michael meets a rival in Skull Slash and Marianne and Lady Ling. Okay, but nice to see he's preserving that rivalry, even if there's no reason for it. After a heavy battle, Michael decides to use the Shot Bomber to defeat them both, but it doesn't work. Skull Slash counters the attack. He he said Skull Slash. That does not sound like an evil laugh. You can't defeat us that easy. He enlarges some of the unglers to deal with powering the sword dynasty team. Careful, said Michael. We can't afford to underestimate them. There's one mecha and some of them. Powering the sword dynasty team calls a very dynasty megazord to win the day. Using the beetle sword and the sword fist sword, they defeat the enemies. Afterwards the rangers are exhausted. Wow, that plan was too risky, said Michael's. Well, it'll be too early for a honeymoon, my dear wife. Oh yeah, we can't have a family until the enemy is defeated. Eat it. Um, um, I doubt, I, was that ceremony even legal? Oh, because I doubt it would hold up in court. He teased Marianne about being married to him and that he wanted to have children with her, touching her belly, making her finger bearing his children. That would require rape and, yeah, let's just move on. You know, Marianne, I begin to think what the name of our first child would be. Maybe I can name him Takaru if he's a boy, or Rin if she's a girl. I definitely wish our children would look like you, said Michael. If all the gag aside, that's just disturbing. Hey, who says I'm marrying you, said Marianne. Don't even dream of it starting a family with me. I definitely don't want a family with a guy like you. You go, girl. Marianne, I'm officially... Your husband now, said Michael, grabbing her by the hand as she attempted to escape him. Oh, God. And well, should I say, honey, dear, or what? Oh, yeah. First things first, I'm registering you as my wife. You'll be second in command when we get our marriage legitimated. Legitimated? And registered in the law's offices tomorrow. Michael bent to kiss Marianne, resulting only in a slap. She's making the minimal effort to resist this. She was still unsure about her forced relationship. Why do you have... Are you unsure? It should be obvious. Don't think about it, said Marianne, chasing, unwilling to be married to him. I'll let you pick out what's wrong with that sentence. I'm not getting our paper legalised. You can't register me if I was violated by consent. Um, if he was violated by consent, then yes, he can. No way am I going to call you honey, nor am I going to accept my promotion as second in command just to become your wife. However, the ending ends with another kiss. Yes, Master Chagrin. Okay, let's see if we can get Chapter 9. Awaken Tiger Spirit. Yes, we can. Apparently only Episode 7 isn't on here. I'll be sure to check what else isn't. Michael and Roberto begin their training session to get out of suit. It's time to build alertness and awareness of the mind. We have to keep our skills sharp, said Michael. Hey, that's my job. Sorry, Mr. Narrator. Now let's be ready. After a rather impressive fight scene, which we don't see, Roberto has finally won the battle. So you have improved, said Michael. You have learned well. Oh, I still have to greet my wife. Wife, you haven't even... Wife, you haven't even registered Marianne yet. I find it odd she's given some privileges now, but I'm willing to obey her for your sake. Nice to see that the wedding hasn't gone ahead. 
Ed, maybe you need some alertness training yourself. Yes, in how to treat a woman. Marianne came in after she had freshened up. Good morning, honey, said Michael to Marianne. Oh, gosh. Good. Oh, good morning. Breakfast is ready, said Marianne. I put strike nine in it. <laughs> Thanks, honey. You're the best, said Michael. Stop calling me that. I'll never accept our marriage last time as real. Apparently, Marianne is aware of the fourth wall. Never. I just agreed to marry you to continue my job as a Power Ranger. What part of a job requires you to marry the Red Ranger? Because otherwise that would have resulted in a lot of... Well, I'd, okay, it probably would have resulted in a lot of good marriages since a lot of the Reds and Pinks tend to get shipped. I think with a few exceptions. But never mind. Right. I'll only obey you because we need to fight the battle, said Marianne. Back at the death vessel. The Emperor talked of his subjects. Skull Slash, you were so much skilled when I thought. Maybe I was wrong not to accept you since you were just a stray warrior, said so Emperor Gedor. At the same time as I surrounded by pale skin glimmer. Thank you, my lord, said Skull Slash. I guess it's time we have our latest attack on the Sword Dynasty Rangers. On the other hand, I will challenge the Red Ranger myself. Very well then, have it your way. For the first time in our struggle, the level of dark water has increased, said Emperor Gedor. Now to see if I'm making progress. Just as Skosas leaves, leaving his girlfriend, Wadey Ring, worried about him. An evil Psycho Mindo appears. Emperor Gedor, let me offer my services, said Psycho Mindo. You would definitely be good to help distort the minds of the Sword Dynasty Rangers. They will be easy prey soon. One of them has to be a good target, said Emperor Gedor. It shall be so, said Psycho Mindo. I have possession of one of the cursed Li Shan power discs, namely the Tiger Zord. Not to be confused with the Tiger Zord from MMPR. Yeah, no duh. There was also a Tiger Zord in Wild Force as well, but you, uh, la, and as one in Jungle Fury, but you seem okay with letting them slide. Oh, and I forgot the jet from RPM. And, okay, there's probably a, oh, there's like two more after the is in later Power Rangers seasons, but let's not go there. I'll just go on, said Psycho Mindo. I have said, how interesting, it's caught underground. The alarm began to sound and the Power Rangers Sword Dynasty team see the monster attacking the city. Psycho Mindo appears and decides to attack them and shows he's got Tiger Zord. Tiger Zord, said Roberto, that's impossible. During the past, in a battle against our emperor, this sword was caught, and now I will turn it into the service of my, into for the service of my emperor. I think there's a word, or two missing there, and two. It's already in the service of your emperor. You control it, and you all are all next. Just as Charles is about to recklessly attack the monster, Psycho Mindo fires a blast which Roberto blocks. However, Roberto falls into a psychic trance. How interesting," said Psycho Mindo. Gedor will surely reward me. Yeah, my mind control powers have taken over one of the Assault Dynasty Rangers. Praiseworthy. Really praiseworthy. Just then, Roberto runs out of control. He's obviously not out of control. Psycho Mindo is always controlling him. him and attacks the others. Stop! Stop it, Roberto! cried Cornelia. However, he was getting too powerful to control. Okay, this seems like a bad idea on Psycho Mindo's part. The Rangers were forced to retreat and went back to the base. This is a serious case of mind control. The underground monster has taken over him, said Director Samuel Hung. Apparently not, considering what the narration was saying. Well, I guess I, mu I must free him, said Michael. Why you? Why not Marianne or Charles or Cornelia or Fat and Finn or anybody more likeable than you, Michael? What about me then? When am I getting freed? Said Marianne, pouting, thinking that she's living in a clean dump. Yes, you go, girl. Although Michael had granted her the status of an empress, she was not happy about his temper tantrums and the vassals. So the others are telling her he's not that bad. Apparently the others don't know Michael that well. Actually, none. I love you enough of not to let you go. Oh, said Michael. Ugh, that's creepy on so many levels. Live with it. Oh, by the way, the vassals are buying you new clothes, fit for my wife. 
and just Ben Psycho Mino returns to a deaf vessel to bow down to his emperor. Oh, he kept it consistent. That's lovely. I see this is a truly great achievement, said Empagetto. The Blue Ranger is now under your control. Use it to destroy them, then dispose of the Blue Ranger. At once, my lord, said Psycho Mindo. Just Ben of construction site, we have a four arrive facing a mind controlled Roberto. Michael is ready to face with a strong mind. Roberto, please come back to your senses. There's no please there, sorry about that, said Michael. He won't be able to, said Psycho Mindo. He's under the Emperor's service now. A daring sword fight begins. It one slash after the other. Just then, Mike performs a meditation slash, meditation slash, with his sword to attack the evil spirit that possesses Roberto. Roberto is then back to normal. What happened? asked Roberto, who is now out of suit. You are possessed, said Michael. It's not over yet, said Psycho Mindo. I still have Tiger Zord. Michael summons his Lion Zord to control the Tiger Zord. Somehow, after a long struggle, Michael enters into the Tiger Zord and retrieves Lee Shan's and Clan's valuable sword. There's no definitive article. On the other, other hand, Roberto finishes off Psycho Mindo with a sword attack. Psycho Mindo is enlarged. Let's finish this, said Michael. It was now time for the Tiger Zord to combine with the Dynasty Megazord, forming into the Dynasty Megazord Tiger Mode. Bending of a finishing attack, it used its drills on its shoulders to finish the enemy. Miss Ben Roberto bows down and says, Sorry, sir. There's no need to apologise, said Michael. Stand up and be as is. At the sunset, Michael and Roberto are seen continuing their sparring match to increase their fight abilities. Don't tell me Michael isn't sexist after this chapter, considering the way he treats each Roberto better than he treats his own wife. Okay, let's see if we can get Act 10. Seems like it. Yes, we can. Okay, waiting for the page to load. Let's go. Reign of Despero. And I assume it's a monster he's using for Despero, the Tengu looking monster. At the base, the Reigns of Training, it's time for Director Samuel Hung, the retainer for the Lee Shan clan, to present the three power discs. On the other hand, Fat and Finn prepare the three discs. How is that on the other hand? That other hand means there's something contradictory. Those two are complementary. Those two words are literally antonyms. Well, I hope your training has paid off, said Director Samuel Hung. Michael has proven himself worthy to be head. Apparently being head requires you to be a sexist dick bag. Ag. Well then, he has taken the Tiger Zord, and now it's time for him to choose the pilot of the two other Zords, Beetle Zord and Swordfish Zord. Well, I choose Roberto to pilot the Swordfish Zord, and as for Beetle Zord, I choose Marianne, my dear wife, said Michael. Thanks, said Marianne, who was thinking maybe it wasn't such a bad thing. Well, I've given this. It is not a bad thing. I mean, Michael is rich. He can get Marianne new clothes. Everyone's deferring to her, and now she's got her own Zord. It's a win-win situation. And she's kept pacified. He's happy. He handed them the disc respectfully, while Marianne politely accepts. Doesn't it be which Marianne and Roberto politely accepts? However, she still hasn't got over nightmare being married to somebody she has contradictory feelings for. What about me? asked Charles. Your power is not high enough, said Director Samuel Hung. On the other hand, Charles is training harder than before. Now that's how you use it, realising that he's behind schedule. He has begun to keep training harder to achieve his goals and release more power. I can't believe I'm really weak, so is that it? said Charles to himself. Talking to yourself is the first sign of madness, Charlie boy. At the death vessel, and forget all the sight or least tears of despair, monster. Oh, come on. The title gave you a really good name and you, you throw it out in favour of this. I am here to serve you, great one, said Tears is there. My subtle's reign will help you. Let it be so, said Empagetto. On the other hand, Ling, Lady Ling and Aramis tremble with fear. No mention of skull slash, though. Tears of despair pierce the call of its reigns of despair. One plan that may soon increase the level of dark particles. Dark particles. What the hell are they? Don't expect an explanation. It was raining and then after it stopped, a massive sadness occurs. 
Power Rangers receive another distress call. Fat and Finn appear at the map pinpointing the location. Power Rangers saw Dynasty team arrive and see the situation. It's a lot of sadness in the city. At last, Power Rangers, you have arrived to try and stop me, said Tears of Despair. Team transforms into another battle. Marianne is about to use her Beatles or disc, but it's blasted out of her hands. Despair and Charles decide to use it for himself, but Roberto is against it. Green, don't don't use it, said Roberto. I'll have to do this, said Charles. Charles finds out when it doesn't work. Yeah, I know, cheap piece of crap. He gets frustrated as the team is forced to treat. Treat, I think that's the wrong word. He feels like he's out of determination. Just then he decides to rest and go out for a snack and is later seen playing Tekken 6 in the arcade with some words on his head on how weak he is saying. I can't believe I'm not yet ready. There's no speech mark, but apparently the narrator said that. And also, an arcade? Really? Who goes to arcades anymore outside of Japan? Does Ben director Sammy Hunter's? Well, Michael, I think that Charles is getting impatient. He needs to train some more and find himself. I hope you're not being too harsh, said Michael. Charles returns home afterward. Director Sammy Hunter, well, we'll go to the Bamboo Forest tomorrow for some training. It's early morning and director Samuel Hung brings Charles to the Bamboo Forest for training. Right now, you'll have to focus on the power of wood. It's your power, said Director Samuel Hung. So this is it, for me to get stronger? Hunger, said Charles impatiently. The power of wood. Focus, said Director Samuel Hung. Charles is now in his meditative stance, seeing things clearly after a sparring session. Despair me evil tears of despair. Monster uh, tears of despair shows up when Dynasty phone rings. Charles runs into battle with the others and transforms into Green Dynasty Ranger. Just be others are knocked out, Charles gets to visit a great tree and uses wood spear to defeat the monster with some kick-ass moves. What are those moves? The Wind of Leaves, they both have an air fight and Charles ends a fight, defeating a monster preparing for its second form. The monster gives them a rather difficult time. Just then, Marion decides to hand over Beatles Sword Powders to Charles. Why? He learned nothing from this. Charles, you can use it, said Marion. You've earned it. Really? Charles asked. Okay then, Charles can use it, said Michael. Let's form a Sky Glider Zord. The Tiger Zord, the Swordfish Zord and Beetle Zord show up to form a Sky Glider Zord. Marianne and Cornelia are left inside the Dynasty Megazord. Dynasty Megazord fires laser blasts after Sky Glider Zord disables the flight ability of Tears of Despair. Inside the Sky Glider Zord, the three he agree to use the final attack. Time for a firebird attack, said Michael. Brace yourselves. We're a flaming phoenix. They destroy tears of despair. Just Ben Charles bows down and says, Well, sorry for being such a jerk. He wasn't a jerk. Uh, in this chapter, I think he's grown out of that stage. It's okay. You have proven yourself, said Michael. Marianne, but... Just Ben steps on Michael's butt after Michael calls her honey. He... Okay, let... Let's stop there, because let's face it, these chapters are just getting worse. Uh, so he, the whole break, the whole thing of Marianne and Michael is just borderline kind of sexual harassment. And anyway, like I said, I'll be back next time, hopefully with two new guest stars to read chapters 14 and 15 while I read three before that. Well, ta-ta.